Welcome back to the 25 days of Christmas. Today I'm going to be going over tools for single shadow collections. It's day 16. Let's get started on some really good tools that might be helpful if you tend to gravitate towards single eyeshadows. And we'll just kind of move through all of these. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of talk to you about them and let you know what I think. So I wanna start with the first thing. I'm gonna link it down below. I got it from Amazon and it is the, it's a magnetic pen. It's used as a novelty tool, but these are also stainless steel balls. And this right here is a magnet. These are all magnetic pieces. Oops, there's already some fine eyeshadow in the mix. But this breaks down, you can, you know, do different things with it. And then it also comes with a um, refill pen. And it it's actually designed to be a pen, kind of a novelty piece. But I use it and cap it off here at the end with this thing as a magnetic extractor so it can extract like color pop shadows and things like that it also has a stylus oops and it just went in there and i don't think i have all the pieces to it at the moment but there's you know everything breaks down and can be used so there's a stylus piece in there let me just go ahead and show it to you there's a stylus piece in there as well. This is also a magnetic board. Um, you can get it at Walmart. I can link it down below if you guys are interested in any of these products. Uh, just let me know. But yeah, it's just a really great tool. Like if you just want to kind of have a novelty tool that you wanted to use to extract, you know. Oh my goodness, there's so much eyeshadow in this. This is what happens when you have... Um, iron oxides present in the magnetic eyeshadow that you're actually looking to depot. So that's kind of what we got here, but that is it in a nutshell. So I don't really use it typically. I thought I might use it more for just like novelty pieces or showing off stuff, but I really haven't ever used it. And my kids have gotten into it and like really, I know I'm missing the part of the pen that has like a little bit of a point to it and that's useful which is kind of annoying. It's like a $15 Ooh, ASMR vibes, right? Next is actually a cow magnet. They feed these to cows to extract any baling wine or twine or anything that's magnetic in the cow's stomach. It catches on this piece of magnet and then they um, excrete it. <laughs> but it is a very strong magnet and it can also be helpful in pulling, you know, pans out of palettes and just um, I use it on my JD glow excuse me not my JD glow my give me glow eyeshadow palette my summer vibes because it hangs onto the pan you can see right here and it's long enough that it can extract the pan from the palette without putting a dent in it like one of these magnetic pieces so I like these cow magnets for that. Um, and I have the Summer Vibes. This is actually uh, JD Glow's white gold, but you get the picture. They're the same size palettes. One of the most useful pieces in my collection that is a tool for single eyeshadow lovers is the Nespresso Tamper. It is um, 24.6 millimeters in radius. And this is extremely useful for pressing standard size pans. I'll show you right here. Let me get one that has some color to it actually. But if you look directly down, you can see that it almost fits perfectly. So it's very useful and helpful. I got this, um, I did not think of this on my own. Marta from Marta's Makeup uses this to repress her Tammy Tanukas, um, single or loose pigments, and she also repress, represses shadows. So this is very useful and it has doubled and paid for itself. I bought mine off of New Egg for $11, but I think you can probably get it off of Amazon for $14 if you have Amazon Prime. So you pay a couple extra dollars, but you will get it. Um, prime if you needed. I threw in this guy here. 
this seems to be something that I use quite frequently to measure out pans to make sure things fit in my custom palettes so if you're one of those DIYers um, a caliper might be of interest I know I found one at Walmart for $11 this one was gifted to me by my husband and um, he is an avid Harbor Freight shopper so I don't think it cost too much more than $11 it might be along the $20 range but it is super super nice and uh, weighty uh, you can turn it on zero it out you can do millimeters or inches um, just a really good tool to have for somebody who's a DIYer this set right here, it's linked below in my description box, is the antenna magnets and there's the various types of poles of antenna magnets here present. This is a 15 pound pole and it comes with two of them I believe. This is a 10 pound pole or maybe this is 20 and this is 15 and then this is like a 3 or a 5. Um, but any which way I like this one, it's the second one in. It is the one that extracts the pans from a palette the easiest without really like snapping up hard on that magnetic field and then risking like scarring and damaging your shadows so this is the one that I recommend however um, it does come in a set I think it's like nine dollars total and but I use them all the this one's next to useless because it's I think it's a three pound pole and this might be a ten pound this is either ten or fifteen I should really be looking these things up but anyways there you have it some other random tools that I have acquired over the years are just I own this pen here I own the entire set I got it from Walmart and they're made in Japan they're really super fine tipped and this is actually what I use to write labels on they don't bleed they're not permanent, however, they're super fine. I think it's a 0 0.7 or it's a 0 0.5 millimeter tipped pen, so it can write on the backside of pans really well. I use, this is also something I recommend, it's these Avery Circular Labels, and they are slightly smaller than an inch. I think they're about 24 millimeters, but they are very useful in labeling pans if you do any repressing. So I acquired these from Hobby Lobby, and these have actually been extremely helpful because this one right here is so thin, this piece of stainless steel is so thin that it can oftentimes get in between a pan with a palette and it can do it with almost little to no damage. This is an actual depotting tool, it's what you'll see primarily on um, a lot of people's channels, but it is substantially thicker. I don't know if you can see that or not. It is substantially thicker um, in width than this Hobby Lobby one. And then on the other side has kind of like a scraper type of tool, which is also very useful this one right here not quite as thin but it is still very helpful and it's already bent they aren't very um, durable so I mean obviously it being thinner makes it more prone to bending but this right here you wouldn't believe it but it's just super helpful in tucking in corners um, flattening things down just kind of like a piece of magnet or something like that you would just be surprised at how useful this piece is and I think I bought this in a set and it was like four dollars so extremely useful these are available on Amazon you could just type in depotting tool and oftentimes when you buy single eyeshadows and the stainless steel pans that go underneath them with the stickers on the back square and circular uh, this tool will come with it so that's just really useful I threw in some scissors here just a good quality pair of scissors is really helpful also getting a pair of nail scissors might be useful too I didn't uh, bring those out today but those are also really useful here's a pipette this is really great for dropping in some mixing medium or a binding agent if you're trying to press loose pigments into a pan and mix them up because you can actually uh, just get like you can almost quantify the amount that you're using when you use a small I think this is a one mil pipette so that's useful I haven't really used it all that often I did grab them at Hobby Lobby just to let you know you know they're out there it's 
I think it's Hobby Lobby the soap making kit for those of you that are available in the United States. This is a little travel spritzer, but I put alcohol in it and I put the 91% alcohol. Anything above 90 to 91% is going to be useful when you are dealing with shadows. You want to sanitize things, but you also don't want that um, to leave any water residue within your shadow because then that could create water activity and mold and mildew and things like that. So the higher the amount of alcohol content, the better. So, but I just included that because that's extremely helpful. I also wanted to add these adhesive um, sheets of magnets because I use them oftentimes to just, you know, take a shadow, um, trace it on the back of there and cut it out and then pop it into a palette or just, you know, things of that nature. So I include those because they're $2, you get two sheets, so basically a dollar a piece. They're found at Walmart in the um, Arts and Crafts Center. They're just really useful to have on hand. I always keep a couple of these on hand and with them being only $2, it's easy to just include those in your um, shopping cart. You don't really notice the price difference <laughs> that way. And they come in handy more oftentimes than not. So. Those are all the tools that I really highly recommend if you're getting into single eyeshadows and you're looking to, um, you know, manipulate or move things around or depot or anything of that nature. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the 25 Days of Christmas. A little bit more um, info for you. And tomorrow the video is going to be palettes I purchased in 20. 2021. So from a single eyeshadow collector's perspective, which palettes? caught my eye. Stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed to my channel if not already. I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye!